Welcome back to Ferocious Education, this is Ed. Today, I want to talk about Invesco Mortgage Capital, going with the ticker IVR. Now, I'm going to go through due diligence, news, their presentation, financials, fundamentals, followed by that technical analysis. If you want to skip towards a technical analysis, I split this video towards that technical analysis and you can do so right now. But without further ado, let's jump right into this one. So, Invesco Mortgage Capital. Now, a quick thing here, this is their investment income principle and basically uh, their entire process, the investment strategy. And these go, go something like this. Dynamic real estate market requires a proven and fundamentally sound investments process. One focused on achieving a competitive dividend while maintaining the stability of the portfolio book value. At Invesco Mortgage Capital, we take an opportunistic approach we consider a broader spectrum of opportunities and deliver more diversified or deliver a more diversified portfolio than more than most managers of mortgage are EITs. Our extreme or external management team performs detailed analysis at the security, loan, property, and borrower level. We employ comprehensive risk management with specific elements integrated at each step of the investment process. The IVR portfolio results from a series of disciplined and defined process stages, including macroeconomics and capital market analysis, achieving detailed understanding to process governing interest fees or interest rates, the business cycles and other financial conditions. Mortgage sector analysis, identifying opportunities and trends in agency bases, prepayments, credit sector bases and assets and funding sources. Security level analysis, $96.9 .9 million in quarter 3 2020, $111 million in quarter 4 2020, and a loss of $20.4 million in quarter 1 2021. Now, when we go back down towards uh, other, like the list that they've actually described relating to that net loss, we're able to see that the net, net loss attributed to the common stockholders for the first quarter of 2021 was $20.4 million compared to a net income, a net income to common stockholders of around $111.6 million for the fourth quarter of 2020. Now the net loss was mainly due by uh, because of a $332 million net loss on investments that exceeded net gains on derivatives of $287 million during the quarter. The company raised $161 million of net proceeds from issuance of common stockholders during this quarter, which is basically like offerings, uh, public offerings or direct. Book value per common share for the first quarter of 2021 decreased 5.4% to $3.65. So the current price point right now is around 417. So the price of book is comparable. Uh, so it looks like maybe the Finviz one of 0.86 is not actually correct because they do mention that the price over book was 365 or sorry, the book value is 365. Um, that is 5.4% decrease from quarter to quarter. Now, an increase in interest rate volatility led to wider interest rate spread on our 30 year agency RMBS holdings, in addition to a sharp increase in mortgage rates and reduced investor demand for repayment protection, resulted in lower valuation premiums on our agency RMBS. The benchmark 10 year US Treasury rate rose 83 basis points to 1.74%. Now, the average asset increased to $9.3 billion from $7.7 .7 billion in the fourth quarter of 2020. That's for the total average assets. And the total average borrowing increased to $8.3 billion from $6.9 billion in the fourth quarter of 2020. The current market capitalization is around a billion dollars. So that's just something to keep in perspective. Now, another thing here is their offerings and uh, their common dividends so the common dividends first is nine cents and this is based on the stockholder record on april 9th 2021 and the dividend was paid on april 27th 2021 so it looks like each quarter you're looking somewhere around 10 cents or so so that's something very similar to what you've seen similar to other mortgage industries for common uh dividends not special dividends now you're able to see some other results for instance uh the net loss per common share of around 9 cents, uh, core earning per share of, of 11 cents, 
book value per common share of 365 at the quarter end dividend per common share is around 9 cents with economic return of negative 3.1% Investment activity, invested proceeds from capital raises to into agency RMBS, specified pools and TBAs, held $693 million of unrestricted cash and encumbered investments at the quarter, and an increased investments in agencies RMBS specified pools by $9 or $0.9 billion to $9 billion. Decreased investments in TBAs by a national amount of $200 million to $1.5 billion. You're able to see as well some of the micro, macro uh, environments and increase in treasury yields, a decrease in money market rates, or even a little bit stabilized in some sense. Uh, the only everything else is stabilizing except the agency MBS repo declining. The US Bank and Federal Reserve MBS holdings in trillions have been actually on a steady incline. And the volatility, um, I would say for the SPX volatility index, that one seems to be stabilized. However, the ML option volatility estimate index is actually increasing. Now you're able to see as well some of uh, the agency RMBS investments, etc. But I'm not going to go through that just because that information is easily uh, over there. So I'm going to just scroll up and you can just pause and read if you would like. Now, the next thing I do want to take a look at here is institutional buyers. Now, for the institutional buyers, you're able to see that currently they're more bullish than bearish. There's a lot of additions, specifically as well at the end of May and early June, by all these institutions. So they're tell that's telling you that they're up to something. Now, before moving on towards technical analysis, if you'd like to see more contents like this, make sure to hit that subscribe button on the bottom right corner, subscribe and turn your bell notification not button. Also, make sure to drop a like, and if you'd like to join our Discord, you can click Show More and join our Discord. Now, in terms of fundamentals, I'm not going to go through this one, just because right off the bat, we've seen that the price over book here is actually wrong, and the book value might actually be as well wrong there, so I'm not very comfortable going through this, because a lot of these fundamentals are negative. Like, for instance, the EPS this year was a negative 600% almost. EPS in the past five years was negative. Next year is only around 4%, so not very comfortable going through this one here. So let's move on towards technical analysis. Now, from a technical analysis standpoint of view, what we get to see here on a one month, one day perspective is that things are starting to look very bullish. On the ADX, it's sitting around 2870, indicating a, a trend that has a very strong potential to become a strong trend. The really percent R is not actually even at the overbought section. It's closer to overbought than oversold though. Now, in terms of the MACD, you see a positive reversals that occurred on the early morning of 8th of June, uh, 2021. Today, you've seen an increase in this momentum and the momentum itself indicator is at 0.63. So the moving average as well, you see that the price point is for the first time in a while actually, way above all these moving averages and that's a bullish indicator. Now stochastic fast and stochastic slow both are kind of indicating upwards, telling you there might actually be another leg up for this one. Volumes have been insane today. This might actually be the strongest and the biggest volume you've seen in the stock history. Now, the current Bollinger Bands, the moving average, don't hold much onto this one because of this strong volume. But what we get to see here is on the Fibonacci retracements, if we go all the way back, this stock before the market crash was around 1830 and it dropped down all the way to 180. So what we're going to do here is we're going to be using a Fibonacci retracements all the way from the 1830s all the way down to the 182 level. And from there, what we're going to see here is that the stock itself has a Fibonacci retracements resistance closer to the 567, 809, 1003, 1198, 1476, and 1830. But if we were to actually take a look at more of a micro level and sit at the 840 as your resistance and kind of ignore the historical price point, which we'll go back to in a second, and take the 240 as well at the bottom, you're seeing a Fibonacci retracements resistance at the 469, above there 540, 610, 711, and 840. On the support, you're seeing 382 and 240. Now on a price line action, you can say that there is a very strong support sitting at the 414 level. And then below there, you're looking down at the 394, 
and then downwards at the 373, going to 354, and then 338, going down to 327, and then down to 295, 267, and the 253 level. Significant resistance levels, you're seeing a strong one at the 416, where it's currently at. And then the 447, and then the 516, and then the 554, 598, and then the 690. Now we can go backwards even and take a look at the historical price points. And I would say one of the strongest resistance you probably will have will be at this line here, the 1484. Above there, another strong one, 1657. Above there, 1732. And be careful of that 1831 to $19 mark, because that will be a very strong resistance. Now, in terms of the stock itself, they've been giving dividends almost kind of constantly around 40 cents at a time before the pandemic and after the pandemic it went down to around 50 cents and then two cents and then just recently it actually increased up to nine cents but what i'm trying to say here is that this stock here has been given continuous dividends and their historical price point is massive uh, disproportionate from where it is right now and what i would like to say is that this stock might have actually some time to recover but it still isn't even closer to there. The short interest here is closer to 20%. So I'm guessing this price action movement could be also fueled by there's the, by the reason that there's a lot of shorts onto the stock around 16 to 20%. But in my perspective, this stock has some room to grow and recover back towards the $18 level. Hopefully it does so. There's one of the stocks that really haven't recovered in the massive rally, or at least attempted to at the start and just dropped, attempted to again and dropped. So what I would see is that, or what I think is going to happen is a lot of different investors are going to look at this one, see, okay, the price over book is actually attractive because we've seen uh, the book price is around 365. The current SP500 price over book is around almost five that means that this one has some room to grow it's almost a non-brainer and they would invest their money here now in this sense do i think this is going to hit 10 bucks anytime soon if i were to guess i would be i'd say in the next couple of years it should start recovering if they don't go bankrupt and that's my opinion what do you think about the sticker make sure to mention down in the comments below share subscribe and like and have a wonderful day now, if you made it this far into the video, I do recommend that you go ahead and join our Discord server. There's a lot of amazing folks in here. Uh, we do a lot of discussions here into the trading floor throughout the day. A lot of people are in there and we do ask questions. You can ask me uh, any question you would like on there. We do post research and DDs and we hold weekly uh, chat sessions. And we also do have a lounge in there. So make sure to actually join that and join the fun there. Have a wonderful day and a good one.